Yes, folks, it's Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton. That's me, by the way. Do please like and subscribe. It only takes a second. Just click the like, and it really, really helps. It boosts up the channel on uh, on YouTube, you know. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about the nastiest, horrible, dirtiest, perverted perverts that I met when I was working at, at Wormwood Scrubs Prison. HMP Wormwood Scrubs, located on Duquesne Road in London West 12. Well, I was uh, My first post in there was on uh, sea, sea landing, sea wing, uh, and I was on C2 landing. And on that landing, there was a, a, a very seemingly intelligent gentleman who had been a major in the British Army. And... Uh, he was on the landing, and I was speaking to him, and he was, I'd been in the army myself, and uh, uh, he seemed to me to be a, a, a typical uh, military gentleman, you know, very, very smart, despite the fact that he was in prison clothing, kept himself tidy and neat, and seemed very presentable, you know, and uh, spoke very properly, and uh, I thought, well, that's a strange thing, this man in prison. So I had a look at what what got him in there, and it was the most horrible, he, heinous offence you can possibly imagine. He had been, when he left the military as a major, appointed as the officer in charge of a nursing home for handicapped children. These are people, paraplegics, people with multiple sclerosis, etc., who were confined to wheelchairs. And, uh, of course, it was heavily staffed, but he was the officer in charge. And what he'd been doing was uh, he'd been sexually molesting these uh, physically handicapped individuals, some of whom uh, had no ability to speak and couldn't really complain. But he was discovered, apparently, in the act with uh, some... A young boy, probably, I believe, that the children up to the age of about 18. So it, it, it was, these were really young children, and, and he was uh, molesting this uh, this child in his office when somebody walked in and caught him on his hands and knees, fillating the, uh, the poor young boy. Uh, that was uh, how he managed to find himself in Wormwood Scrubs, I think he was doing three years, something like that, three years, but that was a dirty, despicable, horrible, nasty kind of uh, offence. Also on C2 landing, of course, I've previously mentioned this, was Peter Cook, otherwise known as the Cambridge... Yeah, yes, you've got it. And uh, what happened with him was uh, he decided that he really wanted to be a woman. He tried to grab hold of me and kiss me, uh, but uh, I kind of dissuaded him from that as gently as I possibly could by wringing his bloody head into the wall. Uh, anyway, he was frequently uh, to be found on his hands and knees uh, well, let, let, let's get down to the basic here. I mean, they call it fellatio, don't they? But, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it amounted to this dirty old bastard getting down on his hands and knees and sucking all the remains' nodgers. So he was a todger gobbler. Yeah, seriously. But it, And he had raped maybe a, a hundred women in and around the Cambridge area. He died in prison, of course, Peter Cook. Yeah, so he was, uh, I encountered him at, uh, at the Scrubs. Also on C1 landing, uh, secluded from uh, the other inmates, was a big blob slob of a man uh, who had uh, managed to get himself imprisoned, believe this or not. He, he used to uh, gain an, an erection and smear... It's hard to it's hard to describe this without feeling physically sick. He used to smear syrup onto his penis and get 18-month-old babies to suck the syrup off his erect penis. 
Uh, and he openly said to anybody who cared to ask him, that as soon as he got out, he was going to go back and do it again. I, I wrote this up in his records and made a formal uh, representation to the governor to uh, inform the police that this man should not be allowed out unsupervised because it was his stated intention to go back to sexually molesting babies. You don't get much worse than that, really, do you, folks? Unless, I mean, you go to the Ted Bundy stage where you start eating people. Yeah, which I... I I haven't actually come across a cannibal, although I did encounter the uh, the Soho vampire. He'd been murdering prostitutes and drinking their blood. He was mad. He ended up in Broadmoor, that lad. I tell the story in my first book about how uh, the senior officer in charge of the wing on the day sent me to the cinema to take him to watch a film called Vault of Horror which was about, believe it or not, vampires. We got about ten minutes into the film, and these vampires were had strung this fella up and put a, a tap into his neck and were drinking his blood. Of course, I'm handcuffed to the bloody Soho vampire, and he kicked off. Wow, wow, strain him in a man, trying to bite me. I, I had to subdue him with a, a tap on the head. It was the kind of tap on the head that puts you on the floor, you know. Well, he had to do that, and I'm not, I'm not going to be allow myself to be eaten alive by a bloody vampire, am I? And he really thought he was a vampire. Yeah, I wonder if he thought he was a vampire when he got an arse full of Largactyl in Broadmoor. Uh, and also at the Scrubs, uh, of course, on A Wing on the segregation unit, was uh, the absolute... Uh, notorious daddy of all the dirty bastards, uh, Ian Brady. And uh, we all know what Ian Brady did, but did you know that the, him and Myra Hindley used to go and picnic on the graves on Saddleworth Moor, where they'd murdered their victims and buried them on the moors? Then they used to go and have a picnic and drink a glass of wine together. Uh, and they had tape recordings of the children being tortured. My father, who was a CID officer, uh, during the time of the uh, the trial of Ian Brady, was present in court when they played the recordings of the little children pleading to be allowed to go home. And they say, oh, we'll, we'll not tell anybody, you know, just let me go home. Well, they never, they never made it home, did they? They were murdered by Brady and Hindley, tortured to death, then buried on Saddleworth Moor. Now, when it comes November, going into December, if you really want to see something totally frightening, just about twilight time, have a ride up to Saddleworth Moor. Well, especially if it's raining just a little bit, just before it goes dark. Believe me, it is a frightening place. If you're sensitive, I'm pretty sensitive myself, and uh, you, you, you'll feel that, and there's a feeling of oppression. It's, I'm sure it, it is definitely haunted. Saddleworth Moor, near Manchester. Have a look. It's near Oldham, really around that area anyway it's that time of day i hope you've enjoyed this by the way don't forget to like and subscribe and read my books folks still haven't found my real song dinger so i'm using this big bell here yeah that's just to warn you i am about to sing I'm going to do today a song from West Side Story that was uh, it was made famous, of course, by the the musical and the film, but it was recorded in 1964 by the perverted pop star, the trouser ripping Texan, P.J. Proby. It was also recorded by a guy called Tom Waits.
It's been recorded by loads of people, of course. Matt Monroe recorded it. Probably Perry Como recorded it. I'm not exactly sure about that, but certainly Tom Waits recorded it. And Tom Waits recorded it in a very distinctive fashion. Google it, Tom Waits. Tom, W-A-I-T-S, Tom Waits. Google it on the, on YouTube, you know. Have a look. And, and he sings somewhere in a, a really distinctive fashion. Probably uh, hams it up a little bit, as you've probably heard. And now it's my turn to murder it. There's a place for us Somewhere a place for us Time to gather With time to spare Time to learn Time to care Someday Some way Somewhere we'll find a new way of living. We'll find a way of forgiving. Somewhere, yes, and darling, there's a place for us. Somewhere, a place for us. And that... Dear friends, is your lot. Do like and subscribe. And thanks very much for watching. And Larry, have a good time with your goat this evening. <laughs>